Hello and welcome to this uh, special discussion on the integrity of the electoral process. You might wonder why we are having a discussion on the uh, integrity of the electoral process, uh, largely under the uh, supervision of the Election Commission of India. Uh, why are we doing this discussion now, uh, after the successful conclusion of the 2024 Lok Sabha elections? That is because a lot of uh, niggling questions uh, following the Lok Sabha election, the way it was conducted by Election Commission, the way data has has come out after the elections, uh, the way uh, data has been compiled by by civil society organizations, uh, by uh, former bureaucrats who uh, who have the experience of uh, of conducting elections in the past. Uh, these some of these uh, uh, aspects, some of the very critical aspects of of conducting India's elections uh, have thrown up uh, some stunning uh, numbers, some stunning statistics, uh, which have which have never been seen before. And, uh, and for the first time, uh, mind you, with improved technology, with improved systems, we, we are seeing massive data discrepancy. For example, between votes uh, polled and votes counted, it has been recorded very well it has been talked about and um, and today we have we, we have with us uh, parakala prabhakar who regularly uh, uh, comes to wire uh, with his uh, expert uh, views uh, with his uh, expertise on on some of these very aspects uh, of the of the electoral uh, process uh, uh, welcome to our show uh, parakala prabhakar uh, uh, as uh, uh, as we all i mean i've i've seen you've been talking about a lot about uh, the uh, about data post elections uh, data that that have been compiled and uh, data which clearly point to to something uh, not very right uh, and uh, and and the election commission uh, is uh, ma has maintained radio silence uh, uh, in the face of uh, such uh, data uh, discrepancies uh, i mean discrepancy would be a mild term uh, uh, I would want you to explain what exactly are the are the issues that have cropped up, and uh, and and many civil society organizations now there's an international body uh, which is now looking at some of these uh, these aspects of uh, of of, of uh, you know how electoral integrity uh, uh, could have been violated uh, uh, on a on a scale uh, which is worrisome. So, Prabhakar, please start by telling our viewers. We we, we like to have you here because you. Uh, you explain things uh, very, very simply, and uh, uh, to, to the to the viewers, uh, and uh, you have a way of you know uh, cutting across a lot of complex uh, you know uh, 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 like issues and and like go for the jugular. Please tell us what do these data points suggest, and, and what are the key data points that that you have looked at. Thank you very much, Venu, for having me. Um, you know, after the uh, elections are concluded and the results are out, um, there are uh, at least, as far as I know, three organizations, or three groups of experts have uh, talked about the uh, integrity of the process. One of them, of course, you know very well, uh, they have, they've been around for a long time, Association for Democratic Reforms, ADR. Yes. Other one is Vote for Democracy. It's a Bombay-based uh, group uh, which has uh, former bureaucrats, former professors of IITs, IIMs, and other people. And then uh, yesterday, the final report of the international panel to monitor the Indian elections. Uh, it, it has a, a, a panel drawn from different countries too, from Bangladesh, yeah. from Germany, from Britain. You know, they have raised very serious issues about the integrity of the process they have raised some questions now i am not trying to say that you know this election is compromised or you know i am not a priori saying i am not readily saying but then mm -hmm. the point is that you know these three reports have raised very serious uh, issues about the integrity uh, my my uh, uh, purpose uh, would be very limited you know, that these points that were raised by these three groups will have to be, first of all, discussed very widely in the country. Mm. Second, 
the election commission of india will have to made be will have to be made accountable and made answerable to the points that are raised mm. now i do not want to, people like you and other people to you know take the 2024 elections as done and dusted let's move on kind of a thing the reason why i say this is you know th there is i mean i'll i'll concentrate mainly on one particular uh, report that is vft that is the vote for democracy report which has come out with a finding that there was a difference of about nearly 5 crore votes the difference between the votes polled and the votes counted yeah five crore votes, uh spread across the country but if you look at uh, specific uh specifically across 15 states it affected the outcome in 79 seats which have gone in favor of the bjp nda now mm -hmm. 79 seats if had, if if they had not gone to the bjp nda instead gone to the opposition the, the scenario would have become would, would be completely different yeah now the 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 the, the difference uh, here is is the following that you know uh when the when the election commission announces the provisional figures at the end of uh, the day of of polling or you know uh, very late in the night and then within either 24 hours or 36 hours the final figures are released yeah this time this time around that has not happened. the first phase provisional figures and the final figures the election commission has taken 11 days can you believe it are you would you say that this this is unprecedented not you, no other never, election before this has it happened really. never has it happened and the second phase which is more interesting second phase the election commission of india has not even released the provisional figures constituency wise or even state wise even the provisional figures you know they've straight away released the final figures after Five days, okay. and three, four, five, six, seven. They have taken for some phases three days, some phases four days. So eleven to three days they have taken time. This is unprecedented, and you know overall there is there is almost about four percent difference. But if you disaggregate that to the state levels, in Andhra Pradesh it amounted to twelve point five four percent. in odisha it was 12.48% or something like that you know somewhere around 12.5% 12.5% uh, venu is huge because 1% makes all it the it, it has it has this level of deviation has never been seen before in any lok sabha elections it's never happened like you have suggested that maximum deviation would be uh, up to 1% or uh, thereabouts right 1% or less than 1%. 1% is the maximum the outer limit in the past if you look at past data that's right now uh, i will first of all quickly dispose of some of the uh, uh, smaller issues and uh, i would like you to uh, i would like us to spend more time on three or four crucial data points yeah, yeah. now let me first of all uh, dispose of these smaller issues the smaller yeah. issues are like, for instance the election commission uh, you know when these uh, concerns were raised initially that why are you taking so much of time etc then uh, uh, the election commission said you know uh, uh, it's the distance and logistics and uh, you know connectivity um, you know uh, need for uh, uh, triangulation personnel are tired and things like that and all these were there even before now if that is mm -hmm. the case what i want you to uh, uh, take note of is say for instance look at chandigarh mm. chandigarh the constituency is about 15 kilometers radius yeah it is just about uh, uh, 615 or 614 uh, uh, polling booths yeah. and uh, the total voting is about 4 lakh 48000 yeah very manageable why do you have to take and i can understand up which is large constituencies which is almost uh, uh, 10 lakh votes in every constituency and then the distances the logistics maybe the connectivity i can understand a bit of a delay but chandigarh why do you take 5 days to get the uh, you know the final figures so this is one thing that we need to keep in mind this is one 
this the second thing is that you know um, the provisional figures are provisional figures and after, after that you know still people you know at the close of the polling uh, generally the 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 returning officer would extend it by an hour or so five o'clock yeah. official polling closes till six o'clock it could be officially extended and even at six o'clock you know everybody who's already queued up they're allowed yeah. to go. so it might take an hour it might take two hours i can understand so even if you take those two things also into consideration how is it possible that in some area in some uh, states uh, there is 1.5 lakh votes is it possible to uh, uh, field I mean, poll 1.5 lakh votes in about a couple of hours or one and a half hours is that possible mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, in, in in some uh, areas it is 80000 85000 it is 1.25 lakhs this is the kind of hike that we have seen so mm -hmm. the election commission's uh, defense that you know it is the uh, distance logistics etc etc and then you know the the provisional figures and the and the and the final figures may not tally because of you know extended polling hours does not wash so that is disposed of and then uh, they, they some people also say that you know uh, after the provisional figures are announced it might take a while. It might take a while in the sense it might take about 24 hours, 36 hours. It has never crossed 36 hours. Maximum, it, you know, in some instances, it's about 48 hours. Now, with all the kind of technology that we have, the kind of connectivity that we have, and and it is EVMs. I'm telling you, it's EVMs. It's not paper ballot where you you count. You know, true, when, true. when the person is pressed, it. You know how many votes are polled. Hmm. This also raises a question. Uh, but but that is disposed of. It is it is it is it. I mean, it doesn't wash. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing, the election commission and uh, some people who 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 would like to play a devil's advocate in this particular thing would say uh, that you know uh, uh, why do you say that uh, there is uh, there is the, there is there is a compromising of uh, integrity of the election because of this? I'm not saying, but then. What I want is that the election commission will have to come out and clearly tell us in a convincing manner, these are the reasons why there is discrepancy. Yeah. These are the reasons why there are uh, there is a hike here. And at least they should, yeah. At the very least, uh, Prabhakar, in places where it has taken over eight, nine, ten days. I think they are obliged to tell the people why it has taken nine, ten days. Uh, when, when, uh, yeah, when, when so many days uh, in the no, never in the past have so many days been taken to to check the number of votes uh, polled, isn't it? Hmm? Yes. Now let's let me come to you know the facing of the polling. Now uh, Tamil Nadu has thirty nine seats, as you know, it has one. Assam has. 14 seats, just 14 seats, it, ha it had uh, three phases. Bihar had 40, that 39 is Tamil Nadu and 40 is Bihar. 39 yeah. seats, one phase and 40 seats, seven phases. Yeah, yeah. Madhya Pradesh, 29 seats. Andhra Pradesh, 25 seats one day. Uh. And Madhya Pradesh, 29 seats, just four more, four phases. Of course, West Bengal and, you know, UP, I can understand, you know, 80 seats, seven phases, I can understand. Uh -huh. But of the uh, uh, states, Karnataka, Maharashtra, uh, Andhra Pradesh, I mean, uh, 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 even, uh, even West Bengal, states like that with similar numbers, you know, the point is that the election commission will have to give us a very convincing answer. Is it because of the moving of the forces or is it because of the moving of the personnel? Is it, what exactly is this? Mm. Uh, the first ever election that was held in India, 51-52, it took 119 days. But the second election, it just took about 10 days. Okay. Mm -hmm. This has, have, has have been introduced by Mr. T. N. Session, you know that, because you know he wanted to prevent like, no forces and all that. I can understand that. But I want the election commission to give us a convincing, cohesive reply to say that these are the logistical reasons. So that is the then comes, you know, uh, 
These are the. Uh, uh, let, let me clarify here, Prabhakar. You, you 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 say you want the election commission to give you an explanation on on the uh, on the reasons why yeah. it takes eight, nine, ten days to uh, to determine the number of votes poured, isn't it? Right. Yes. And in this this particular aspect, I want also to draw your attention to this for second phase. For second phase. No provisional figures, constituency wise, no provisional figures state wise. Uh -huh. It is the final and in total. Mm. And even today, as we are talking now, I just checked before coming out of this program if the if the election commission has released any figures for phase two. Even today, phase two has no numbers from the election commission except the final figures that they have released. Where are the provisional figures and where are the state wise figures and where, where are the uh, uh, constituency wise figures. So no, no state wise figures, no constituency wise figures. No. And you are Why? saying that in the in the past, election commission with much less technology and infrastructure would would come up with these numbers uh, within a requisite yeah. number of days, right? And you know, uh, related to this is one more thing. Uh, uh, know, Form seventeen C part one. Form 17C Part 1 is filled after the polling is over with the polling officer and the election agents yeah. all looking up and, you know, these many votes were polled and all of them are signed. Now, that, that is put up, the practice has been that these, these numbers are put up constituency, not only constituency-wise, booth-wise in the election commission's website. Okay. This time they have departed from this practice. When okay. questioned, when questioned in the Supreme Court, the Election Commission has gone to the extent of saying that we don't need to. By, by law, we don't need to. But, you know, when you had this, ultimately, all our purpose is that it should be transparent, isn't it? And, you know, only political... No, but if, you say, if you said by law, they don't need to, then why were they doing it earlier? They, they were following these procedures earlier, right? Yeah. In, the, in the interest of transparency. You know, you, oh, you, you in, might... Yeah, in the interest of, yeah. Transparency and, and, and in the interest and, of uh, yeah, uh, pa, uh, keeping public trust. Yeah, where is the need to hide that? Why do you hide it? And it, it's not a big deal. It's not a big thing. You, you you can just publish it, and you have published it earlier. Yeah, this election commission has published it earlier. Now, another related point. Here, here, here I want to ask you something, Prabhakar. Uh, I just want to interject here. Uh, by by law or by uh, is it within the rules uh, that that the opposition party can insist on uh, um, on the candidate opposition can can insist on the uh, on form 17c signed by the election officer uh, see, citing the number of votes polled uh, uh, say uh, say within 24 hours or something or within at least 48 hours uh, is that the, a the, the political parties have it but generally what happens is the political parties, agents, the candidates, agents don't care to take it at the point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This one. The point is this. Now, and the election commission or, uh, you know, the devil's advocates might say, well, the political party should have taken it. True. Okay. Yeah. That question comes to mind uh, to me also. Yeah. 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 But then I have an answer to that. You know? See, election in my books is not a game played by and among political parties. What about me as a citizen? If I want to know how many votes are polled in a particular booth, am I not entitled? Yeah. I, do I have to be a political party or do I have to be a candidate to have the uh, Form 17C Part 1? Everybody should know it, isn't it. Because political parties and candidates are a small part of our population, of our citizenry. The large body of the citizenry should know how many votes are polled in each booth. True. Why am I being denied by the election commission, which was not denied to me earlier? Why in this election? And when when uh, when when uh, phase two, the entire data is blocked out, is blacked yeah. out. You know what is the result in that particular uh, phase in West Bengal? In phase two, three seats have gone to polls. All the three were won by BJP. Okay. In UP, in phase two, eight seats have gone to polls. Mm -hmm. All the eight have gone to BJP and NDA. Mm -hmm. 
in Madhya Pradesh, six have gone to polls and all the six have gone to NDA BJP. In Chhattisgarh, three have gone to polls in phase two. Out of the three, three have gone to NDA BJP. So what to, connection are you trying to make here? No, trying to make in the sense, you see, when you block out the, okay. the, the complete polling data, even today it is not available, the strike rate of BJP NDA is 100% in, oh. in these states. In Karnataka, 12 out of 14. In Rajasthan, 10 out of 13. Assam, yeah. 4 out of 5. Yeah. So, you know, the, the, the strike rate overall, in some states it's 100%, in some states it's 65, more than 65. And, and in, 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 say, for instance, uh, you know, we, we, we talked about uh, the standard deviation and the strike rate. If you look at uh, Uttar Pradesh, for instance, Uttar Pradesh, the hike was phase three, 0.2 percent, 0.2 percent, mm. and phase four, 0.34 percent, phase five, 0.23 percent, phase six, 0.01 percent, uh, phase seven, 0.25 percent. Okay. That means, uh, Prabhakar, let, let me let me re, let me capture what you're saying for the audience. Yeah. You're saying in Uttar Pradesh, there was hardly any standard devi any deviation between votes polled and votes eventually votes counted. Ah, so this is this is this is in five phases. Yeah. Second five phase days. we do not know. Second yeah. phase we do not know. Okay. First phase there is the deviation. Now, phase one and two, if you see together, it is sixty-five point five percent strike rate for uh, the BJP, where their figures are not available. Mm -hmm. Figures are you know the standard deviation is very high. Where where are the, the figures that I have just read out to you. 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, where the, the deviation is only 0 0.25, 0 0.01, 0 0.23, and, and the maximum is 0 0.25, there the strike rate to NDA BJP is only 40%. So in your view, Prabhakar, the, at what point do people start becoming uncomfortable? People start becoming suspicious. When the standard deviation crosses 1%, 2%, like... Of course, 10, 11 percent is unprecedented, as you said. If votes polled, uh, votes counted, eventually votes counted turn out with 10 percent more than the, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, votes polled, then obviously the people start suspecting, which happened in Orissa, I guess, you said, right? There was a uh, more than 10 percent deviation. Well, allow me two, three minutes, uh, you know. I'll, 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 I'll give you the... No, I, I wanted to explain this, yeah. Yeah, I, I, th that's what I'm coming to. Now, yeah. Odisha, for instance, Odisha average vote hike, uh, uh, in, uh, according to this calculation, is about twelve point four seven percent. That means uh, the the votes counted were twelve point five percent more than the more than the votes polled. In the sense, you know, uh, the 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 figure that was announced provisionally at eight forty five in the night on the polling yeah. day, yeah. and the final figure which was announced after three days, four days, or five days. The, the hike is 12.47%. And in between, they didn't announce any figures, right? No, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay. Okay. Now, this amounts to 42 lakh votes. And if you divide 42 lakh votes by the number of constituencies in the state, it amounts to 21 uh, constituencies. It amounts to 2 lakh votes per constituency. 2 lakh votes per constituency, we know. And and if you see, you know, the the number of seats that were won by BJP NDA in this state with 2 lakhs or less than 2 lakh vote margin, it is 18, which means 18 seats are under this scanner. I don't want to jump to the conclusion, but I, I, want, a, I want a convincing response to this. Now, but this did, is uh, did, has BJD raised this issue? Because this this looks like a like like that. I mean, this number stares at you. Uh, this number is like a. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll come to that point uh, quickly, uh, Venu. But let me finish. Just let me run through these fifteen states quickly. Now, in Maharashtra, vote hike is eight point six seven percent. That translates into eighty two lakh votes. 
which means 1.72 lakh votes per constituency and uh, uh, nda bjp nda won 11 seats because of this that that is the that is the uh, you know suspicion we need clarification west bengal average vote hike is 4.83 percent Total vote hike is 36 lakhs, more than 36 lakhs. Per constituency, it translates into 87,000. And no, no, when the, you, uh, uh, Ravaka, when you say vote hike, I'm hmm. again for the purpose of the viewer, I'm clarifying. Vote hike means that the difference between the finally the votes counted and the and the and the origin uh, the provisional uh, number that the election commission gave at the end of the voting day or within say 24 hours right yeah mm -hmm. see yeah. Uh, um, let me let me let me say this again in the past if you take the historical record the provisional figures and the finals figures there was never a deviation of more than 1% yeah that is a key that in the past historically between provisional and final voting figures the the difference was never uh, the standard deviation is never more than one percent. Yes, and, and now for the first time we are seeing deviation of eight, nine, ten, sometimes twelve percent. Twelve point five percent. Huh? Now, twelve point five percent. Yeah. Now, now, if you if you translate that into see practically, for instance, uh, the difference, you know, the percentage difference we have seen, but constituency wise, it is a difference of 2 lakh votes per constituency in Odisha, for instance. Yeah. Now, I want you to tell me, is it practically possible to poll more 2 lakh votes between 6 o'clock and 9 or 10 or 11 o'clock? Yeah. 2 lakh. You know, even if you take the I mean, quickest time is mm -hmm. a minute per vote. So 2 lakh minutes. Yeah, yeah. Is it possible? Physically, is it possible? No, True. That is now Andhra Pradesh. Very interesting. Andhra Pradesh is again one of the highest, twelve point five four percent, which means one point nine six lakh votes per constituency, and mm. seven seats are on the scanner. Karnataka average vote hike is four point zero eight percent, which is Per constituency, 79,743 and six constituencies are under scanner. We need to, we need to uh, investigate what happened in the six constituencies. Mm. At this grid, 4.93, 86,000 votes per constituency. Scanner is five, five seats. Rajasthan, 5.60. Per constituency, 1,71,000 and five constituencies are under scanner. And Bihar, Bihar. 3.30 percent per constituency it is 29,000 and the number of constituencies under scanner are three. We need mm. to investigate these three states. We need a rational explanation for this. Then of course you have Haryana, then you have Madhya Pradesh, um, then you have Telangana. Telangana you have uh, average uh, vote hike is about 4.28 percent which means 86,000 votes per constituency and four constituencies are under scanner. And Arunachal Pradesh, Assam again is about 1.07 uh, lakhs uh, per constituency and three constituencies are uh, under. Arunachal Pradesh has 12.22 percent and per constituency, it means 54,544 uh, votes. Yeah. Uh, that is, uh, you know, the, 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 how do you justify 1.79,000 or 1,79,000, 1, 1,80,000, 88,000, 85,000, 79,000 votes per constituency in about two or two and a half hours? Is it possible physically? True. Why? I, mean, I I just want I just want a rational explanation. That Tell is me, not uh, yeah, Prabhakar. Uh, now you you've raised this issue. You've been talking about this. The yes. some of the civil society groups uh, which gathered all this data. They've been talking about it. Now a global, uh, as you said, uh, international monitoring uh, uh, body uh, uh, monitoring the Indian election. They have also talked about it. What is the, how do we go about this? Because this problem will keep persisting. We have four elections in front front of us in the next uh, two, three months. And uh, 
there will be more election next year uh, and these are all the provocative critical elections uh, which will in some sense uh, decide uh, the overall political uh, you know hawa as they say and uh, and we all know the the general uh, kind of uh, the general trend uh, is that that bjp is in decline right and the image of prime minister modi is also in decline which is uh, which is not something which even they deny uh, they, they are now trying to desperately trying to uh, you know revive themselves uh, get back into the game uh, in that regard maharashtra haryana jharkhand and these elections are very important how my critical question is how do we ensure that this what you just mentioned does not get repeated there it will be it will be much easier to do it in in smaller uh, you know uh, Uh, at a smaller, on a smaller scale, because if if indeed then, if indeed something wrong has happened, uh, the Lok Sabha, and uh, even if something wrong has not happened, if indeed the question that you have raised, if no explanation is forthcoming from the Election Commission, then who do we go to? I mean, who does the uh, voter this, or the citizen go to? Do you think yeah. they go to the Supreme Court now to to? to to examine some of this data is is the supreme court uh, open to it or is the, is the opposition active enough uh, because because the way you are relating it uh, if they if they if something happens if the say, similar trend persists in maharashtra where votes counted uh, is say 5 6 percentage point more than the <laughs> votes polled uh, then then it could have a, it could have an impact on the the overall uh, uh the polity the way the direction which we are moving isn't it yeah you see uh the citizens group uh, which uh, which put out this vft report vote for democracy report they have served a, a very comprehensive notice on the election commission it's yeah. almost one and a half months ago so far the election commission has chosen not to respond to it okay election commission is not responding one and uh, you've raised a, a point wh- why the why the political parties are not raising this you know i i f- first of all i feel that this is not only the remit of the political parties it's everybody's the civil society will have to talk about no, no i agree with you i it's uh, you are doing it civil society is doing it uh, but why the political parties are not doing i have a small explanation yeah see if if suppose party a raises this then immediately there could be questions uh, that oh when you when you win that x state y state z state then then it's okay is it when you lose it then then you are questioning so for that no, it's not have... a provocation it's not a question of winning or losing yeah. the limited question as you have explained yeah. is how do we come back to a system uh, with all our infrastructure and technology how does the election commission ensure that that the difference between votes polled uh, or the provisional number of votes uh, which are determined maybe up within 24 after within 24 hours of polling and the votes counted stays within 1% as is the historical average i, I mean how do we how do we does it go up to 8 10 9% 10%? but this is not about defeat or uh, victory this is about a simple uh, you know data data integrity simple exactly. Uh, uh, Venu, you you are you are a very keen observer of the financial systems and all that. Now, a bank branch, before the branch closes and before the staff leaves, it's reconciled. Even if there is one rupee difference in the reconciliation, yeah. they Absolutely. sit again and, and do it again, close it, and then go. I mean, they can't leave. They can't leave the bank premises if there is. They can't, they can't leave. And and the manager or some staff can't say, "Oh, it's only one rupee. I'll give you one rupee." No, that's also not allowed. now when there are lakhs and lakhs of votes that are not reconciled there are questions about it what should be done why the political parties are not raising this question is one i have given given one small example the other thing is my point is that you know if if any political party is laboring under this impression or uh, uh, this hope that you know this time we have not been able to do well next time let's try you know they are living in fools paradise because if 5 crore votes can be hiked in this election if you don't question this if you don't monitor this if you do not interrogate this next election it will be 10 crore votes 
Yeah, it could. So you can, right. you can forget about it. You can forget about the Indian election process. Yeah. So these, these, these things will have to be explained, convincingly yeah. explained. Why is the election commission not responding? And you know, it's it's more than one and a half months since the notice was served by the VFT. They have not responded. Now, uh, when it comes to the Supreme Court, you know, I I do not know how the Supreme Court will will take it. You know, they have they have taken uh, almost how many years? Seven years to respond to the electoral bond scheme. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no point if uh, you know the Supreme Court comes up with some kind of a thing, you know, in 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 2029 or 2028 or something like that. How how does it matter? Yeah. But the point is that these things. I mean, I do not want civil society to think or consider that 2024 election is done and dusted. This is the government there in place and all that. I yeah. consider that until a very convincing response is forthcoming from the election commission about these points that were being raised in three reports, in three different reports, in three different you know expert panels, they the the the, the debate should be on. And you know the best thing or the worst thing that these people, uh, the government and the ECI and you know the so-called mainstream media and all these people can do is to kill these three reports with silence. Just don't talk about it. You know you you have you you hold a discussion like this for a day and you know after that you know it's gone and you know the business as usual and you know something happens some Olympic medal or you know some games or some foreign visit or something or the other the the mainstream media will be flooded with those kind of news and you know it's back to normal. That I my concern is that that should not let to be happen. You know uh, that is how where. The civil society should take up, and you know, I have suggested one thing. I don't mm. know how it would be uh, uh, effective, but you know, let crores and crores of postcards go to the Rashtrapati Bhavan, mm. saying that please make the ECI explain the these discrepancies. You know, answer these questions. Come clean about this. You know, if there is that kind of a pressure. If crores and crores and lakhs and lakhs of postcards go, I think there will be there will definitely be a moral pressure on the president of India and and from there to the election commission of India. Then they can't just get away with it. And True. I do, I do not want this government to feel that you know you know we 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 we, we passed the uh, uh, stage and you know it's, it's it's business as usual. No, yeah. your, your your mandate is still being examined. You're right. It, it can't be business as usual because, uh, as I said, th there are so many elections coming up and it's very important for the opposition to win those elections to maintain this momentum of uh, of their revival, right? The India alliance. So, no, so I, I, did, I, I did find, uh, Prabhakar, that the, the many opposition parties also expressed uh, when they saw the numbers that, that came out uh, as compiled by the expert committee, uh, that civil society organization, uh, voter for democracy, democracy right? Uh, so, so they... The yeah, vote for democracy. So they they did express shock, and they for a they sat up. I mean, they uh, it it hit them. It definitely hit them that that five crore is the number of votes that uh, uh, that were extra votes that got uh, counted as opposed to votes polled. The difference of five and the fact that they were concentrated around seventy nine uh, constituencies and all the data, all the explanation that you gave. It, uh, it 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 kind of stunned them, but uh, I was surprised after being uh, after getting that little shock, they all went back to business as usual. Maybe it's possible that they were complacent that that uh, that, that they that done it, they done reasonably well. The India Alliance and the uh, Parliament, their presence has increased in Parliament. The new energy there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, but I hope the the opposition does not. Uh, uh, think that this is the end of it because uh, if, if if they, as you said, if they don't, if they don't persist with this issue, uh, uh, then it might be too late later. As you said, the discrepancy can go up from uh, ten percent to fifteen percent at some point. You know, no, no, so, I, I'm indifferent to who wins, hmm. but I want the process to have complete integrity. 
Yeah, completely. But that's the thing. I mean, it, 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 there is there is there is re, there is room to you know suspect that seventy nine seats have gone to the ruling NDA BJP, which would otherwise have gone to the opposition. Uh, 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 but but still, I'm indifferent to that. Let those seventy nine seats which have gone to ruling BJP NDA alliance, let them go in a in a, in a proper way. Yeah. Then then the then, then the fight is political. To convince the people, True. isn't it? If it is yeah. not, I mean, if suppose you and I go to the polling booth and vote, and if you are not sure whether what what you voted, where you pressed, is not uh, where it is going, number one. Yeah. Number two, if 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 it is the case that you know hundred votes in a booth are polled and hundred fifty votes are counted, yeah. then what, how do you fight that? How do you find and that? Yeah. How do you fight a government which has, which is the result of the outcome of this kind of a process? True. True. Yeah. This is the main point. Therefore, yeah. this issue should not be let to die. Yeah. And this should not be allowed to be killed by silence. True. So you are suggesting that even if the election commission. Uh, you're demanding a rational explanation for this. All the civil society organizations also demanding a, a rational explanation of the election commission as to why the number of votes counted is so much more than the number of votes polled. If they, if they indeed come up with a convincing no. explanation, then they, people they, can uh, people can move on, right? Uh, but, yes. but then that's but but they, they're not even of, responding. Yeah, this silence, the silence is in. I agree with you. The silence is what, in some sense. Is uh, is is very very worrisome. Ominous. Thank you, Prabhakar, for uh, b bringing this uh, very very critical aspect uh, of uh, electoral practice uh, and electoral integrity. Uh, explaining it to our, our viewers because uh, I know this has been uh, uh, this has been reported in newspapers in bits and pieces uh, for the last two three months, but uh, it has really the import of it. Uh, has not been understood by the people, which uh, I'm sure after your, the way you've explained it, the, more people will think about it. And uh, your idea about postcard to the president, uh, hoping that it becomes a reality. Thank you very much for talking to us, Prabhupada. Thank you. Thank you very much.